Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Snotty little bastard, eh? We're kicking off our new season with Scream and Scream Again, featuring not just one legend of horror. You think I could do it all on my own? Not just two. It's only just beginning. But three. But this time you have gone too far. Together in one film. What? Not at the same time, of course. I am utterly appalled. It's not just that Price, Lee and Cushing barely meet. Oh, that's terrible. Perfectly terrible. It's that they are top build. Yes, I've wondered about that too. Peter Cushing is barely on screen for three minutes before falling prey to a Vulcan nerve pinch. <laughs> Price and Lee fare better and actually share a scene together, but because of how it's shot, they're only on screen at the same time for these few seconds. And if you take all three stars' screen time, it totals barely a fifth of the film. Just that. Which doesn't affect the story or my enjoyment of it, it just really pisses me off. What's it all about? Good question. What is it all about? You won't understand and I won't explain. Can't explain would be closer. That's about it. The film follows three storylines. A man in a hospital bed steadily losing limbs. Tis but a scratch. I've had worse. Just a flesh wound. A police investigation into a vampiric killer. What are you, some kind of a maniac? With a novel way of getting out of handcuffs. and a violent torturer in a totalitarian state that uses modified road signs for its symbol. Now, do you think we are finally winning? How will these three stories come together? So you see, it's like taking the best working parts of two separate machines and forging them together into one perfect new machine. That's how it's supposed to work. This is more like taking the best parts of two machines then banging them against each other and going, yeah, that'll do. Such operations are rarely successful. Actually, my question should have been, when will these three stories come together? It's an hour before there's even a hint of a connection. And when the moment comes, you don't appreciate it because you're too busy wondering why a vital piece of police evidence is being kept in what appears to be an unlocked conservatory. Sir, please, if you would let me explain. This is a film that would have David Lynch shaking his head and reaching for the cliff notes. I haven't got the vaguest idea. And, as if it wasn't hard enough to follow, our lead character, not Price, Lee or Cushing, oh no, is killed long before the end. leaving us to follow this guy. I'm sorry, Doctor. Who is useless. He gets knocked out more easily than a WWE referee. Still in the future, there won't be any room for imperfection. It's not horrendously bad, but it is frustrating. I do not understand. This film reminds me of The Resurrection of Zachary Wheeler. The idea at its centre is interesting. I don't agree with you, sir. It references classic horror. It's the old man scientist's dream. Tying a Frankenstein motif. You see, she's been assembled piece by piece, organ by organ. To a Cold War context. Your document, sir. But the execution is as clumsy as trying to dub the word garbage over crap. Garbage. So, to quote Zafor Beeblebrox, 10 out of 10 for style, but minus several million for good thinking. Scream and Scream Again manages to crowbar in its title using this song. What's the most blatant example of crowbarring a film title in? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.